structural limits, performance limits, and regulated limits. What are they, how many are there, and how do we use them day to day in our aircraft? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the third class in the Mass Imbalance series. Today we're looking at structural, performance and regulated limits. What are they and how they are important to the safe conduct of every flight we do? All at mass that we learned about in the previous class is useful for measuring the mass of an aircraft at one point during the flight. When we're actually in the process of flying, the mass of the aircraft will change as we burn fuel. So we can use multiple masses to refer to different points in the flight. Primarily, we use the takeoff mass and the landing mass. Takeoff mass, or the actual takeoff mass, is defined by taking our all up mass and then taking away whatever fuel we would have used by the time we take off, which is our taxi fuel. Our actual landing mass is defined by taking that actual takeoff mass and then taking off the fuel that we would have burnt by the time we land, which would be our trip fuel. And we can also see the actual landing mass equals all up mass, take away tax fuel, and then take away trip fuel. Structural mass limitations are, as the name implies, to do with structure and the build of the plane itself. These are hard limits that can never, ever be exceeded. The main ones to be aware of are maximum ramp mass, maximum structural takeoff mass, maximum structural landing mass, and maximum zero fuel mass. Maximum ramp mass is mainly a limit of the gear wheel assembly and it's to do with us taxiing around the ramp of an aerodrome. The maximum structural takeoff mass is how much the plane can physically carry into the air, how much the structure can handle carrying into takeoff. The maximum structural landing mass will usually be less than the takeoff mass because when we land there's that additional force of us actually hitting the tarmac. And the maximum zero fuel mass is to do with the point where the wings attach to the body of the aircraft. Normally, the fuel is stored in the wings, so it creates this downward force in the wings. If we have zero fuel, the lift that goes into the wings could be too much for this point to take and it could break, in essence. It's important to note that maximum structural landing mass can be the most limiting during takeoff. This is because if our actual takeoff mass is greater than the maximum structural landing mass plus trip fuel, that means by the time we get to our destination and have burnt our trip fuel, we could still be exceeding our maximum structural landing mass. Maximum zero fuel mass can also be the most limiting on takeoff. That is because if our actual takeoff mass exceeds the maximum zero fuel mass plus takeoff fuel, we could get into the position where we burn all of our fuel, hopefully not, but you could get into that position where you've burned all your fuel and you're still above your maximum zero fuel ma mass. And that would mean that the wing route couldn't take the forces that the lift is adding to the wing. This concept is best shown with an example. So we've been given a maximum structural landing mass of 40,000 kilograms, a maximum structural takeoff mass of 45,000 kilograms, 
and a maximum zero fuel mass of 39,000 kilograms. We also will be given our takeoff fuel, which equals 3,000 kgs, and our trip fuel, which is equal to 2,000 kgs. So we know from before that our most limiting is either the maximum structural takeoff mass, the maximum structural landing mass plus trip, or the maximum zero fuel mass plus takeoff. So maximum structural takeoff mass we know is 45,000. Our maximum structural landing mass plus our trip fuel we know is 42,000. And we know our maximum zero fuel plus takeoff would be also 42,000. So our most limiting and our limit for today's flight would be 42,000 kgs. This is because if we took off with our maximum structural takeoff mass of 45,000 kgs, by the time we got to landing, we burn our trip fuel, we would only be down at 43,000 kgs. So we would be above our maximum structural landing mass. Now this is a lot of acronyms. There's MS Tom, MSLM, MZFM, but it's important to say them out in full, otherwise you won't remember what they mean. So always say maximum zero fuel mass. Don't say MZFM because then it just becomes letters and becomes confusing. You have to say the amount of fuel. So we've got all those structural limitations. Um, so how are they useful? For example, we've calculated we need 15,000 kilograms of fuel for our flight. That's what we need to get from point A to point B and all of our taxi trip cafe. The maximum structural takeoff mass of an aircraft Golf Alpha Tango Papa Lima is 65,000 tons. <laughs> 65,000 kilograms. The dry operating mass is 45,000 kilograms. And we have a traffic load of 10,000 kilograms. So, first of all, we know we've got dry operating mass, traffic, and maximum structural takeoff mass. So we're mixing things. So what we're gonna do, be very tall for dunking unbelievably awesomely. We've got dry operating mass. We know that's these two, or 45,000, and we have traffic here, 10,000, and we've got fuel here. So we can calculate a total mass. Let's do that. So we have 45,000 for our dry operating mass. We'll add to that the traffic load, which is 10,000. We'll add to that our fuel, which is 15. And come up with an answer of 70,000 kilograms. We can't go above our maximum structural takeoff mass, which is 65,000. Our all up mass is 70,000, so we can't complete the flight if we keep this exactly the same. The solution to this problem is what? 45,000 is fixed. Basic empty mass cannot change. Variable load, we could chuck crew off, I suppose, but we can't really change it. Our traffic load, 10,000 kgs. We could change that. Fuel, we can't change that because we know we need 15,000 kilograms for this route, for this flight, to be legally compliant with all those fuel needs. So, we have to reduce the traffic load. 
we have to take 5,000 kgs worth of traffic load off of our flight. It's obviously a very simple example, but it, but it illustrates the point. So we are not always limited by the maximum structural limits of the aircraft. This is something covered a lot more in performance, but aviation is a mashup of all the subjects. So I'll cover it briefly, but simply we can be performance limited. This is due to the engines of the aircraft liking certain conditions more than others. And the runways of the world are all in different places at different heights and are all variable in size. In general, for takeoff, cold dense air is preferred to hot non-dense air. With a long runway added on, this is the ideal condition. Where is that most dense air? It's low down. Sea level airports are ideal. On the contrary, if an airport is already at an altitude of 6,000 feet in the middle of the desert with a short runway, the performance of the aircraft will be terrible. So in this fictional desert location, it's likely we will be limited by the performance of the engines what they can actually handle. These limits are referred to as the performance limited takeoff mass and the performance limited landing mass. Again, as with the structural mass, the performance limiting landing mass can be the most limiting. If we add our trip fuel, by the time we have burnt our trip fuel, we might still be above our performance limited landing mass. The most restrictive out of our performance limits and our structural limits is the one we use for takeoff calculations and landing calculations. This is called our regulated limit. This is our regulated takeoff mass for takeoff and regulated landing mass landing. For example, Desert High International Airport located at 5,500 feet above sea level in the middle of the desert and we have calculated our aircraft from before, Golf Alpha Tango Papa Lima, to have a performance limited takeoff mass of 63,000 kgs. What is our regulated takeoff mass? Well, from before, in that previous example, our aircraft had a maximum structural takeoff mass equal to 65,000 kgs. We can never exceed this, but we also won't be able to get out of the airport unless we are this weight or lower. So our regulated takeoff mass is in this case, the performance limiting takeoff mass. So our regulated takeoff mass, 63,000 kilograms. So to summarize, let's get some acronyms down on the page. We have our actual takeoff mass and actual landing mass. What we actually weigh during takeoff and actually weigh during landing. We have our structural limits, which are maximum ramp mass, maximum structural takeoff mass, maximum structural landing mass, and maximum zero fuel mass. We know that we can be limited, not just by our maximum structural takeoff mass, but also by our maximum structural landing mass plus the trip fuel and also by the maximum zero fuel mass plus our takeoff fuel. So our lowest of maximum structural line of mass plus trip fuel, lowest of maximum blood. So our lowest of maximum structural landing mass plus trip fuel, maximum structural takeoff mass, or maximum zero fuel mass plus takeoff fuel is our limit structurally 
for takeoff. We're not always limited by structure, we're also limited by performance. So we have our performance limited takeoff mass and also our performance limited landing mass. We know that for takeoff, we can also be limited by performance limited landing mass plus trip fuel as the same for the structure. The regulated takeoff mass is the lower of these two figures. And the regulated landing mass, again, is the lowest of structural versus performance.